What's going on, everybody? I'm Tank, and this is another episode of Roadie Reactions Rewind. Get with this. In today's Rewind edition of Roadie Reactions, I'm really excited because last week, I shared with you the very first band that I ever remember hearing in my life. And this week, I'm going to be sharing with you one of my all-time favorite bands ever. Of course, we're talking about In Flames. And this band completely opened up the door to the European metal scene for me. When I first discovered them, I went down a rabbit hole of tons of other bands from Sweden, Finland, Norway, all over. Because up to that point in my life, all I was familiar with was American metal bands, and new metal was really huge when I discovered these guys. And I first heard them from one of my really good friends, older brothers. He used to listen to a lot of metal from overseas and one day I heard him playing The Jester Race, which is one of In Flames' very highly acclaimed albums, and I loved the sound. So I went home, I checked out a bunch of other stuff, and I was sold, man. And the song that I'm gonna be sharing with you today isn't one of their more huge mainstream songs. I know there's probably a lot of people that were expecting Cloud Connected or something else like that, but I chose this song today because it was a huge part of my teenage years. This was a go-to song for me for a lot of things. I used to just crank it in my room when I just wanted to relax. I used to listen to it before sporting events in high school when I wanted to get fired up. And it just has a really, really special place in my heart. So today we're going to be checking out a live performance from their 2004 DVD, which I used to own when I was in high school and college, and now I have no idea where it's at. So I probably haven't watched this performance for about 12 to 13 years at least, probably more than that. But I'm excited, man, and this is going to be fun. So I will link this original video in the description below. And today I'm going to be listening to In Flames and I'm gonna be watching a live performance of Colony at Sticky Fingers in Gothenburg. Let's go. God, <laughs> there's a whole new element to listening to music when it's live than when it's just on the album, man. God, this brings me back too. even though I still listen to this song on occasion when it comes up on my playlist and shuffle, just every time I hear this song brings me back to like being a teenager. I think I first heard this, um, if I'm not mistaken, Colony came out in 1999, but I don't think I got it until I was about 13 or 14. So I was either in like late eighth grade or maybe a freshman in high school when I got this and it was just amazing. <laughs> It's still one of those songs that I just remember every part 
of like every instrument off the top of my head, man. This is one of the few songs that I can actually play decently well on guitar. Um, and I used to line check this riff, like the main riff at the beginning of the song at line checks on tour all the time. Um, from this performance, rather this upload on YouTube, it sounds like whoever uploaded it blasted the gain on it. Cause it kind of, it sounds a little more distorted than it should, but it still sounds good. Um, Peter, their bass player, uh, at the time he's not in the band currently, his bass tone was always awesome to me. It's just super gritty, super awesome. And he's one of the few bass players, actually maybe one of the first bass players in bands that I listened to that I noticed was using a six string bass. Um, he uses a six string on most of his stuff. And the bass in this video, I mean, this is like 480p, so it's hard to grab a lot of stuff here, but it looks like an older Ibanez BTB six string, obviously, like I just said. Um, I know in more recent years, he's had signatures made. He has his own signature Ibanez. Um, I thought I remembered way back in the day that he had used an ESP bass, but I might be wrong. Because the headstock throws me off on this video a little because it looks like an LTD ESP headstock, but I know he's been with Ibanez for as long as I can remember, so... We'll get to some other gear later. Let's keep going. Trying to stop so I can watch. talk about Bjorn and Jesper really quick. Uh, one of the things that's standing out the most, and this shows just how old this is, 2004, uh, Bjorn is using a 5150 and not an EVH 5150. It's, it's a PV because way back in the day, PV made the original 5150 amps for Eddie Van Halen. And then later when he started EVH, which is distributed by Fender, the 5150 was... I don't know if there was legal stuff that went on, but the EVH line releases the 5150, but that's an old school PV, um, which was really common in this metal scene. Actually, some of my friends that I grew up with that played guitar and listened to bands like this, they all had 5150s, the PV ones, because that's, I mean, that was the quintessential metal amp that everybody had. Um, I saw a line six rig that he's got under it. I can't tell what cabinet he's using, but he's playing a... Gibson, Les Paul Custom, and he's very known for that. I know he, I think he had a couple signatures, Les Pauls, somewhere in the recent future as well. And then Jesper, who's not in the band anymore, um, I'm pretty sure he's playing an ESP MX, not to be confused with the EX. The ESP MX was the original that ESP made that was like a copy of um, a Gibson Explorer. And then Gibson sued ESP <laughs> and they had to make a bunch of changes to the MX and it's now called the EX and it's got a slightly different body design and headstock and stuff like that. And that happens a lot in the guitar world, man. Guitar companies do not like when their products are copied and then they just make different ones. Uh, one other thing that's, you know, I know I've said a couple times now that members aren't in the band anymore. This right here is the classic era of the band that everybody remembers. Everybody that's on stage right now. This was 
I think this album was the first time this lineup was as it is right now. And I think it lasted until like 2010 or so when they started changing out members. couple last things I wanted to mention before this video ends, and then we'll finish it. Um, so this is shot at Sticky Fingers, which is a legendary rock club venue in Gothenburg, Sweden. I don't know the capacity off the top of my head, but I mean, just from looking at this room, it's got to be less than a thousand. And what I think is really cool about that is that when most bands film DVDs and live performances that they put out, they want to do it in huge places because there's almost an ego thing with that. They're like, look how many people we can play to. And on this DVD, there was a performance at the Hammersmith, but they also included this one. And this is just so cool that they went back to their hometown to perform like an intimate show like this. And this also has Daniel drumming, who hasn't been in the band for a while now. Um, one of my favorite drummers in the scene, man. I've always loved his drum work. Um, I can't tell what kind of symbols he's using, but he always played Tama drums. And it was interesting when I heard he was leaving the band, I was kind of shocked. And then I was even more shocked when I found out that the guy that replaced him was Joe Rickard from Red, who I used to drum tech for. So it was like a weird six degrees of separation. It's like, oh, wow, somebody I used to tech for is in In Flames now. And Joe is no longer with the band anymore, but he was the successor, predecessor, successor to Daniel. And then I've always loved Anders's voice. Um, it's very recognizable. It's very great for the style of music. And I always thought that he and Jonathan Davis from Korn have a very similar vibe and movement while they're on stage. And both bands probably started at similar times in the 90s. I think Korn might have started a couple of years after, but so I'm not trying to say anybody's copying each other. It's just very coincidental. It might just be the dreads and the long hair, but if you watch a live video of Korn and then a live video of these guys, they both move very similarly, same movements. So let's finish this off. If this song ever came up in any of the try not to headbang challenges that I did, I would be <laughs> Um, Let's go talk more about it. I love this band, man. I really do. And I now I really want to find a copy of this DVD again so I can watch it. Although I'm probably sure it's online somewhere. But man, I used to watch this so much and listen to their album so much, man. I still do, but... Just brings me back, man. Just brings me back to a kid getting into European metal and just loving it. And that performance in particular, like we talked about, it's a small, intimate venue. I just love how simplistic it is. There's nothing over the top. Even though at the time they were still a pretty big band, 
they just they didn't do anything over the top. They just threw all their cabinets and amps on stage and just probably used the lights and all the stuff that was in the venue, man. It's just really cool. I love that. I love that just stripped, just let's go. Throw and go. Just put everything up there and rock a show. Um, man, this was fun to listen to, especially to get to do on the channel. And I know there's a lot of people that are familiar with more modern in flames. So if that's you, if you're watching this, hopefully I just got you into some older in flames. It's about 22 years old now that maybe you dug that and you can check out some of their other stuff if you haven't heard it. But thank you guys again for watching, man. This rewind series is going to be super fun. I cannot wait to do more. And if this is your first time here, feel free to click subscribe. I release new videos all the time. So if you turn your alerts on, YouTube may notify you when they come out, probably like eight hours later. If you liked this video, I would greatly appreciate the like. And if you just liked it, not a problem, man. You are entitled to that. Feel free to click dislike, move on. Thank you for watching this time. I'm also on a ton of different social media. I have a Discord server that I hang out on. I stream on Twitch from time to time. And if any of that stuff interests you, I will throw the links in the description below. My handle on everything social media is at Tank the Tech. Thank you so much once again for watching. I will be back very soon with another episode of Roadie Reactions.